All right, as promised, Charlie Regal. Now, people say to me, um, not just in the last 24 hours, just through the years, why is it you talk so fondly about a high school coach and why is it you talk about this guy like he walks on water when it comes to in-state recruiting? And my response has been, because Arizona State has not brought him in and they don't or haven't been involved in local recruiting like they needed to be. And that's just a fact. So I followed Charlie's run from Shap. Charlie and I back in the day would sit with Steve Bellis when Steve was at Hamilton and Charlie would come down to Channel 3. So to see him through the years arrive at his dream destination, um, I'm not making that up. I'm not putting words in your mouth, am I? No, this is exactly where I've uh, always wanted to be. I'm home, you know, and that's that's special. The uh, the journey to get here, though. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Why don't uh, why don't we just back this up? And there's no rush. Are you in a rush? No, yeah, I got plenty of time. All right, so we got plenty of time. So, so how did you start your coaching career? Let's not just go back to Shap and what got you into coaching. Who was that? You no, know, I, I think even before you go to Shap, Brad, you know, you've got people have have to know a little bit about you know my story here in the valley. You know, my mom's from Mesa. Uh, I have family on both, uh, family on both sides, my dad's side and my mom's side, obviously that live here from, from the East Valley to, to Scottsdale. Um, you know, I've been coming out here since the seventies, you know, uh, I've been coming out here since, you know, when, when Arizona had more, uh, more orange trees than, than roads. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I remember going and seeing my grandmother over in Mesa off a country club when it was gravel roads. Mm. And, and so, you know, my uncle was involved heavily in the Fiesta Bowl. Um, ironically, he was a U of A grad and he took me to my first ASU U of, a, U of A game when I was seven. And there was something that in the colors, the the sparky logo that just resonated with me. And from that, that point on as a kid, I, I just was in the people that really know me, my family, um, you know, from the time I went to high school, coming out here to the Fiesta Bowl every year, I had a routine, man, uh, get to the mall whether that be the PV mall, uh, which is no more, uh, or, you know, fashion square and get me some new ASU gear. And, uh, I couldn't wait to, to watch the sun devils or watch the Fiesta Bowl. So when I moved here in 1999, full time, um, uh, it was a dream come true. Uh, it was a place that I, and, and again, you're talking to a kid who grew up in a town of 1200 people. And, uh, where was that? It was, where was Playas, New Mexico doesn't even exist anymore. So it's in the Southwest corner of the state about, 30 miles from the Arizona border, Southwest corner, and about probably 30 miles. Uh, if you went 30 miles South, you'd be in Mexico in just the vast desert. And my dad was in business management for, which a, a lot of people that are, uh, have been around Phoenix for a long time, uh, was in business management for Phelps Dodge. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, you know, again, when I moved here in 99, it was a dream come true. And I started out coaching at Moon Valley high school. Um, and had a nice little run there for five years. And, and then I went to Chaparral twice. The first time as a defensive coordinator under Coach Estabrook. And then I came here to Arizona State. Started in December of 05 and worked with Dirk uh, for 13 months before we got let go. Then obviously I went back to what most people know, you know, at follow football to Chaparral as the head coach. I was 30 years old and uh, had a, a five-year run there. And then obviously got the opportunity to go with Rich to the University of Arizona and um, again, another five-year run. And um, and I knew at that point, in order for me to um, enhance my brand, so to speak, uh, I didn't want to be just the high school guy that that got a job opportunity with Rich Rodriguez at the University of Arizona because I had good players. Okay. Uh, I knew that I could coach. I knew what my capabilities were um, and I had the opportunity to go with Justin uh, Wilcox there to Cal and spent five great years with him and uh, hold him in high regard. And uh, and then I got the opportunity to be a head coach. And it was something uh, at the time that uh, I, I was a dream of mine, you know, to be a head coach. And uh, I took that opportunity to go to Idaho State. And then um, obviously 11 months later, uh, you know, I had no, no inkling that this would be a spot that obviously Kenny would get. And uh, I would have the opportunity to come back home and and when he presented it to me, it was just, you know, it's too good to be true. And it was something that, you know, myself and my family, we couldn't pass up. Yeah, no, it's uh, 
The, the journey along the way for you is, is interesting with just the twists and turns and the decisions that you've had to make. If, if I did the job interview with you and asked you the question of who impacted you most in your coaching career, who would it be? Mm. I mean, that, that's tough. I, I think, you know, my college football coach probably is the first guy that, that had a, a, a significant influence on me about how I approach the game and, and my love and appreciation for it. But then, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't say, you know, Dirk, uh, Rich, and Justin. I've taken, stole whatever you want to say uh, from all three of those guys and, and tried to implement different pieces that I thought they that they did well. Um, and so it would be those four guys. And I know that's not one specific guy, but there's there's four great men there that have helped me get to where I'm at. But you have this reputation of being a fierce recruiter. And I think that there's this side of you that, well, he's a football coach. Recruiting's part of the deal. And I don't know, does it bug you that that's kind of your calling card to people is, well, he's a fierce recruiter rather than what a great football coach football. They're not demeaning you. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. I 100% do. And, and, you know, I think that I grew out of that, me personally, when I went to Cal. You know, what people have to remember is, you know, um, when you, you come from high school and you go to college, um, you know, I'm starting all over again. And, you know, Rich Rodriguez had a system that he wanted to run, and we ran that system. Uh, you know, we did what Rich wanted to do, and there's a lot of merit to that. I got to grow and do what Charlie Regal wanted to do from a special team standpoint when I went to Cal. And so I think personally and professionally, I really enhanced my growth and my brand uh, from a football side um, at Cal. But <clears throat> I understand, you know, recruiting is part of the game. Uh, you know, I've got a gregarious personality. I'm, I'm about people. I love spending time. And, and getting to know people. And, and I'm about relationships first and foremost. Uh, loyalty is extremely, extremely important to me. Mm -hmm. And so I think sometimes that gets lost on people because of who I am. And, you know, I get it. And listen, I, I hear the detractors and I hear, oh, you know, they only got these guys at Arizona. He, he, you know, this, to, look, I took six guys out of here my first full year uh, um, recruiting at Cal. How'd and, you do that? Oh, How did you do that? relationships. I mean, you know, <clears throat> I tell people all the time, I'm not going to work. I mean, like I'm calling guys that I've known for 20 years, mm -hmm. guys that I've gone out and had a beer with uh, guys that we've got dinner when I'm in town, like guys that I've known for, for that are friends. And so uh, I think that, you know, that's, you know, we sat around last night, we went and had dinner myself, Vince, uh, Sean and Kenny. This is something that we've talked about for an extremely long time. Mm -hmm. This isn't just something, oh, Kenny gets the job, fly by the seat of your pants, pull up, and let's go back to Phoenix. This is something we've been talking about, plotting, planning, and whoever got the, the position to make it happen was going to make it happen. And, and, you know, it happened to be Kenny, and I'm extremely happy for him, and that's why we're here. And so, you know, getting those kids – is, was simply based on relationships and then relating to those kids, knowing what they wanted to do and selling them on that vision. It, it's no different though. You know, in 2014, I took over uh, Hawaii, the state of Hawaii recruiting for Arizona. I went in there uh, first year and we took the, the number one player out of the state. We beat 35 schools to get Michael Elatise. And, you know, again, Chad E.K., who was my strength coach at uh, uh, Chaparral, um, had moved back to Hawaii where he's from, made the connection with me and the family relationships, worked through that. And all of a sudden, Michael Altice is a, a wildcat. So, um, you know, it, the game, as you and I have talked about, the recruiting game has changed. And what we have to do here, and we talked about it last night, is the NIL is now uh, the relationships will be the, the icing on the cake that will push us, you know, through. But we've got to be able to elevate the uh, the NIL money and and get on a, a competitive scale with some of these programs that are taking these kids, the top kids, out of here. And if we can do that, which I anticipate we will be able to, mm -hmm. we're going to have good success. Okay, so so walk me through, and for the, the audience that's heard all this about NIL, and I've been banging my fist 
on NIL since about the last year and a half. Like this tidal wave's coming. And so if you're not prepared for it, which Arizona State wasn't, now I believe they are. I was with Knapp Lawrence yesterday. Knapp, of course, stood up and gave a million dollars. You know Knapp. There needs to be about 10, 15 more Knapps. Yes. Yes. You've got to have a pool that is, I, I don't even know if there's a number that you have to hit, but the fan base in the last 24, 36 hours is so exhilarated. Do you, do you have a number you guys need to get to? You know, I don't know. Not, not yet. I, I think there probably is. And I think that's kind of a, a moving target as well, right? That could change year to year. Um, yes. And I think as we work through the dynamics, we'll get there. Um, but you know, I think the one thing that's going to make this staff unique, and again, everybody loves us until we coach that first game. Nine months, man. You yeah, got say, nine as I, I told, as I told Kenny last night, ask for everything, man, because we're undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ask for everything. So, um, you know, in all seriousness, seriousness yeah. though, um, it's, it's, you know, Sean saying, hey, Kenny, we got to go down here to Chandler and meet with these guys because these people want to – they want to get in and they want to, they want to give yeah. us money. It's my cousin, you know, I, I spoke of my uncle, his daughter who has been on the Fiesta Bowl started the, uh, uh, the Arizona bowl down in Tucson. She works for the Arizona sports and tourism, uh, Nikki Balich. Um, yeah. she calls me, tells me about a guy. Hey, this guy wants to give money to ASU for uh, Sun Devil football. He's worth several hundred million dollars. I need to get you guys together, you and Kenny and him. And I think that, you know, that's the difference is we're going to be able to touch a, a different um, core of people than a coach that just comes in here. Everybody's excited. ASU has their core folks, but we have another group of people, myself, Sean, you know, coach Amy, uh, obviously Kenny, that is different than what's been here in the past. And I think that's going to allow us to tap into some different resources. Yeah, no, I think, I think you're spot on on that. It's if you could give the fans an idea on when you go in and meet someone today and it's recruiting conversation, does the conversation immediately turn to, well, what are you paying in terms of NIL? Do the parents hint around at it? I'm not going to besmirch where you just came from. Okay. Right. Space at Idaho state. Sure. For NIL. It's not even discussed probably, or very little. In this world, have you already found that they're trying to get the conversation directed towards how much you're going to pay us rather than we're going to take care of your son. He's going to get a great education. We're going to get him ready for the NFL. No, we just want to know how much we're getting paid. Yeah, I think it's a a mix of both. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, right, money makes the world go round. So, yeah, yeah. uh, you know, people um, want to get want to get their money. I think that's a part of it for sure. But I think at the same time, you know, the people are still interested and concerned about all of those things that you mentioned, uh, relationships, education. Yeah. Um, and, and then I think it's, you know, based on who the player is, it's all relative to what we talk about in the NIL department. How much of it is going to be reading the, the I'll just use it, the BS meter. Well, said school over here is offering X that you guys have to get to X. Yeah, I, I think uh, there's a big piece of that. And that that goes with without saying, and I think in recruiting in general. Yeah. And then I think it talks to um, the talent of the kid. You know, how do we, how much, you know, how do we deem him in terms of a talent and a want and a need? And, you know, obviously supply and demand, right? And I think that's yeah. what's going to ultimately will we'll come down to. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to take that on a case-by-case basis. Look at transfer portal then. How do you address transfer portal? Is it this kid's moved around? This kid is ready to move? There's a story that a kid that was at Idaho State has already been offered by ASU that's out there. Yeah. Uh, which mm-hmm. I think is probably the way to go. It's, you know, from my view, Charlie, seeing this thing and all the ups and downs that they've had, more downs and ups until now, it's go find that kid that, okay, you didn't get the Arizona kid on the front end. But at Mm -hmm. least you made the run. You had the relationship. And if it came down to the end where they decided to go to X school in the SEC or stay home, go if they go, but get them back. Get that SEC kid that made the mistake because a lot of them make mistakes. They go to places where they just are not going to play. Everybody tells them, oh, you're going to be great. You're going to be awesome. And more often than not, they're miserable. 
So to me, that seems to be the strategy or a kid like X Valade this last year who kills it at Wyoming. Okay, come from Wyoming to the Pac-12. That seems to be the right path. Yeah, no, I, I think uh, you're spot on with that. I think if you, you know, sitting in the meetings last night that we had, uh, that's what Coach Dillingham's all about. Like, hey, let's, you know, if a kid doesn't come to Arizona State that's a local kid, I promise you one thing, Brad, it's not going to be because he didn't get recruited here. Yeah. If he goes to the SEC or the Big Ten, I promise you we'll be one of the first to have offered him. We'll know all about him. We'll have had him over here. We'll have recruited the heck at him. And he just made a decision to go somewhere else. And to your point, if things don't work out, then we're going to be able to bring that young man back home and have hopefully have success here in the Valley. But that is a part of our, our bigger plan. When a kid is in the portal, how do you evaluate them? Like the reasons why? How, how well, you I think that's, you know, I mean, it, there's a lot of different layers to that. I think one is you playing first and foremost. And then if we can turn on some tape and, and get a look there, that's obviously a, a, a huge factor. And then it's doing all the due diligence off the, off the field, you know, all the homework on him, all the background stuff and, and talking to him, as many people as you can that know him, references, character, academics, uh, you know, social, uh, practice habits. I mean, we're talking, you know, we're looking at a kid yesterday, for example, and we're projecting him as a linebacker and, you know, it's like, okay, Hey, strength coach said, how does he eat? Yeah. Sounds like a funny question. You know, how does he, eat? when he came on his visit, how did he eat? Is he a big eater? Will he work to gain the weight? You know, all of that stuff matters and it's all relative based on the kid. And, uh, you know, you have to do as much due diligence and homework as you can. And then you're, you're making an educated guess at that point. If a kid transfers from high school to high school, this used to be the case. That was a red flag to coaches, some coaches. Yeah. Now, yeah. So now, I had a little bit of that. <laughs> I don't know how to put it that way. Uh, now, um, especially they transfer to the three high schools, but, but nowadays, you know, transfer is just part of the deal. Um, and uh, at positions like quarterback, for instance, quarterbacks, they're not playing, they're gone. They just, they don't wait. How do you evaluate quarterbacks, Charlie? Yeah. You know, I, I think for recruiting. just, I think first you got to go back and, and before I answer that, say, you know, in, in terms of recruiting, I think, I still think it's a red, red flag. If you have a kid that transfers multiple times, so I'm not talking about once, but yeah. I think if he t transfers a second time, you got to look and find out why. And sometimes there's some le legitimate reasons. Sure. I think when you get beyond that, it, it looks, you know, I, very seldom, have I had a kid that's transferred that I've coached three plus times that's ever panned out, you know? And um, I think uh, when you talk about quarterbacks, that's a different dichotomy, right? The dynamics of that are different. Uh, they come off the board different. They get recruited different. But I still think at the end of the day, you have to look at those things that we're just talking about, because if you're any good, anywhere you go, there's going to be competition. Mm -hmm. And at some point you're going to have to beat somebody out to get the job. And if all you're doing is bouncing around place to place until you find a slot, when adversity strikes, you're not going to know how to handle it. And you can't be a calm presence, a great leader out on the field, not having gone through some adversity and understanding what it takes to dial in, say, all right, we've been here before boys, let's go and go execute and do what you need to do. There has to be some sort of adversity that brings you through the fire, so to speak, so that when you, you need it and when, when the battles come, you have it. When you, uh, when you have a player that says to you, this is how my quarterback guru or my quarterback coach <laughs> says I'm supposed to do it. And look, there's some very nice guys that are in that business here in the Valley. There are. And I think that there is a place for that. But we're, I'm hearing more and more, even at the college, I've even had some guys tell me in the NFL that, well, I've got a player here that's saying, this is how my offensive line coach in the offseason tells me to do it. So I'm going to do it that way. Yeah. Are you finding that to be the space where kids are now saying, my guru is saying to do it this way. I'm not going to do it the way you're coaching me. Um, not yet. I, I, there, there, it's coming. I mean, I, and I, I, you know, I've heard stories and talked to guys that, you know, um, alluded to the same stuff that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, and like I tell people, uh, and I agree with you, there's a place for a trainer, a, a off season type of guy to help your mechanics, what, what have you, but they're not the guys in here pouring over the film for, you know, 14, 15 hours 
a day, you know, seven days a week during the football season and, you know, umpteen hours in the off season. And guess what? The guru, he gives you the techniques, he works with you, and then you go out and when you do good, that's my guy. <laughs> when you don't do good, I mean, coach's fault. You know, that's a heck of a position to be in. I, I shoot, you know, those guys are a lot so smarter true. than me. I want, I want it, I want in on that. That's so true. I get the uh Hey man, you got to put my guy on. My guy is killing it over here. My guy is killing it over there. What about this? Well, you know, it just, yeah, yeah. it's just, yeah, he did. That, 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 no lose, man. They're in a win win situation. <laughs> that is funny. Charlie Ragel with us for a couple of minutes. Now at Arizona State, what is your title at ASU? What are you coaching? What is your. So I'm going to be the assistant head coach, special teams coordinator, and I, I'm also going to work on the defensive side of the ball uh, with the linebackers. It's a lot. It is. I'm up for it. Yeah, I got a few. I got a few more years in me. A little bit more energy, still, still <laughs> saved up. I think I'm gonna be all right. And you know what? Uh, again, man, when you get up every morning and you 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 come to work at a place like this, this is home. Like you know, Kenny said in his press conference, "This is a special place." Mm-hmm. We, we, you know, we're, we're selling something that we believe in and that we've always wanted to do. This is the place we wanted to do it at. There's no fake in this. This is this we're sun doubles, man. And and this is a just a, a unique opportunity. Very rarely, Brad, in this business, you get an opportunity to come home. Mm-hmm. And you know, my mom, as you and I talked about, is 74 years old. My mother-in-law is 81. Um, I want my kids to, to spend time with their their grandmothers. Um, you know, my, my older brother's here. Again, a, a ton of, of family across the uh, the valley. This is this is a special place to me. You know, since I've been coming out here, like I said, and, and since the 70s, um, Sun Devil Stadium, I, I mean, I used to come and watch. I remember, shoot, we'd come out here. I, I remember vividly when uh, Rocket Ismail's brother, Quadri, was playing for Syracuse, mm-hmm. and they uh, and they were playing Colorado. And we came the night before. My uncle had a meeting up up in the press box, Sun Devil Stadium. We went down. I was probably 13, 14 years old and on the field watching them practice and just those kind of memories, you know, uh, won our first state championship in here at Moon Valley High School in 2004, uh, won my last state championship in here in 2011. There's so many memories here. Um, it, it's just a special, special place, and, and it's not hard to sell it when you believe in it and it's authentic. Did you, by chance, see Kenny's press conference live? I did. I did. I when cried. he was choked up, were you choked up? Yeah, I, 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 I'll, I'll start crying right now. And, um, you know what? I haven't, and you and I talked about this. I haven't had that moment yet where I just sit alone and ball, um, ball. Yeah, like, yeah, like know. it's coming. Um, yeah, uh, you know, no, nobody, nobody, <laughs> nobody really knows how much this means to me. And uh, they're my wife and my the, the small, my close knit family. But there's no. This isn't for TV. This isn't for recruiting. This is what I wanted. And like I said, you very rarely in this business get the opportunity to come home and do this. And I'm, I'm very, very blessed and, and very, very fortunate to be in this role. And it's not something that I'm going to take lightly. I want to ask you a couple of questions about Kenny, but before I do that, I do have to ask you about Idaho state. So yeah. your journey took you up to Cal. You had an opportunity correct me through this. You had an opportunity about a year ago to possibly go to Oregon. Correct. Yes. Yeah. And you decided, uh, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, just the day that I got the uh, Idaho State job that, that they offered it, Kenny called me like an hour and later and said, I'm going to be the OC at Oregon. I want you to come with me. And I was leaving my hotel room and I hadn't even told my wife that I'd got the I tried, but I hadn't got a hold of her yet to tell her that they had offered me the job at Idaho State. And so I told Kenny, yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> and then I got home and, you know, we decided as a family, hey, this is, it was my dream, man, to, to be a head coach. And uh, and so we, we went after that, and that's where we went. You went to Idaho State, and it's a program that is down. It's been down for a long time. But you wanted to be a head coach. And looking back on it, what did you do right at Idaho State? Well, I think I surrounded myself with good people. I think that's the, the most important thing that you can do in life. And not, not yes men, but good people that are going to hold you accountable and when things don't look right, um, they're going to, they're going to tell you that. And, you know, that's the hardest part um, is you take a job like that. And I, and I, you know, I, I know there's people, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm taking it right now. 
Um, and I've disappointed a lot of people and that's not easy, it, you know, and, and a guy that, that is what I'm built on, you know, the loyalty, um, that's not easy and it, and it hurts, but, um, you know, it, at the end of the day, I owe it to myself, Carrie, Chaz and Kaylee Regal before anything else, I have to make the best decision for us. And, uh, I made a business decision and I am very grateful to Pauline Theros and, uh, president Kevin Satterley for the opportunity, coach cutter. I know he's disappointed and that hurts me that it hurts him. Uh, but as, as Dirk said to me, you're the one that has to live it, you know, and, and Dirk's a businessman. And, uh, you know, he made a decision to, you know, to leave Boise State to come to Arizona State. Granted, it wasn't after one year, but, you know, everybody has decisions to make in their life. And, you know, I answered to the good man upstairs and, and you know, those three people, you know, Carrie, Chaz and Kaylee. And I made the best decision for our family and um, um, I'm at peace with it. It's fair to say you agonized over this. Well, uh, probably ruined our whole week of Thanksgiving, uh, you know, just going back and forth every day, mm -hmm. trying to make the best decision for everybody uh, involved. And that wasn't just my family. It was the, the coaches, uh, you know, all the people that that I had hired. But, you know, that's the coaching business. And again, I don't make light of it. And I, I don't think oh, I just walk away. No, um, it was an extremely difficult decision. And um you know, uh, it, it, it still bothers me, but because I care about those people. But at the end of the day, I, I made the right decision. Yeah. In full disclosure, Charlie and I spoke last week on this stuff. You know, just it's been. Uh, I would say that it tore you up. I don't know what was the tipping point for you, but you were you were pretty torn. I'd say. Yeah, it was it was extremely difficult, but. You know, I made the right decision. The uh, what is your from afar? OK, what has not worked right? And without I don't need you to throw people under the bus. I just want to know why has Arizona State been mired in mediocrity, as I like to say, for the last since Bruce Snyder's era, where they're they're there at some point and then they dip and they're there and they dip. What is it from uh, your view that you guys are going to uh, do differently? I think there's several different layers to the onion, you know, but I, I think primarily, um, you know, uh, the support, as Kenny said, has to be all in. And, you know, a, a city that we've seen, you and I, uh, and, you know, lifelong uh, Phoenicians, this is, you know, trended towards the pro market. You still here have your core 25 to 35,000 diehard Sun Devils, um, and they haven't had enough consistent success to bring those French people all in. Um, I think that the guys that have come here have done an okay job. Again, not throwing anyone of, of right. recruiting the state and they haven't been all in. And, you know, I, you know, without getting into names of the different coaches, I think all of them came here thinking like, Hey, this is a good job, but it's going to help me get to my dream job. And the difference is, as we sat around last night eating dinner, the four of us, nobody wants to go anywhere. <laughs> We're here. And I think when when you're passionate about something and you want it bad enough, you'll do all the necessary things to give you the best opportunity to win. And I think that's what we're going to do. And that's going to separate us from from the rest. Last question. Kenny Dillingham. What is it we're getting here, Charlie? You've known him for years. What is it we're getting here in Arizona? He was 18 years old. And one time I asked a question about uh, at Chaparral, I asked a question about why why people do things and why you, you do this particular subject that we were talking about a certain way. And at 18, he looked at me and says, you know, coach, you always have to take a look and ask yourself, is the juice worth the squeeze? Mm. And I said, this kid's 18 years old, man. That's pretty perceptive. Pretty good. Yeah. He's, he's ahead of his time. You know, he's a, a high energy guy which is, you know, I see myself in him in that regard. But his intellect and his maturity has always been further ahead than his age. And uh, he, he's passionate about being here, and that's what's going to separate him from all of the rest. I appreciate you. Look forward to seeing you down the road. Thanks for the time. Brad, you're my man. Appreciate you. Thanks for everything. Take it's care. Charlie Regal, and we're back with more 
after this timeout.